is Sanchez from More Man and Gaming here with I, uh, Imani. Imani. And then you were playing, um, what was it? Aron Kite, right? Yeah, yeah, I played Aron Kite today. Alright, uh, I found your deck very interesting. I played Dune Tournament. Yeah. Uh, what place did you come in? Uh, 24th, I believe. So you got the demon now, right? Yes, yes. Uh, do you want to get straight to profile? Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. Um, uh, wherever you want to start it. Sure. I mean, you know, obviously we're playing um, Orin Kite. Um, mostly because I I, uh, I really thought that the green was going to be a cool way to be able to loop some draw effects. Yeah. Uh, normally a lot of people were playing Nanatsu, but I played Skyhawks because of availability, but also they draw me cards. So, um, basically... Just flip the cards upside down. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Um, so basically... I played like a pseudo aggressive level one game, um, complete with the the place of a shard beast, which I feel like most Orans weren't, um, mostly because it gave me early game pressure for decks like Hoenna um, and other white decks actually, because uh, Liam can just take towers early, so to keep up with them. Um, our other one drops were like we played the set of Quorum Squires because uh, they they replace themselves and they trigger Orn. They replace themselves with cards that trigger Orin as well, so. Okay. Because you can go get uh, a couple of the gears we play. Um, and then my last one drop slot as far as units goes, uh, is here, is here cool? Were the uh, Arbor Carbuncles. Um, they're early game draw. Um, they untap two shards, letting you extend yourself a little bit further, replacing themselves mostly. And they'll scout out towers, assuming you're not playing against white. Um, moving into further units, I guess we'll, we'll keep with the green since I already started pulling it out. Um, we also played three Skytree Hawks. And the reason you were playing the Skytree Hawks is because you don't have Nanatsu. Right? It's mostly because I don't have Nanatsu, so I decided to turbo into our boss monster since it allows me to discard gears to draw two more cards. Letting me keep going, try to fill up my graveyard as fast as possible, and drop Ixgander, um, as we all know, right? Um, followed up by the, of course, one Sylphia. Um, and then, uh, right, exactly. Um, and you can obviously manipulate her by discarding gears and continue. Um, and then the one Garga as well, for, the, for similar reasons to Sylphia, but occasionally he gains the haste. Right? So why or is quickness, rather. Play um, mostly I don't have the room because I prioritize drawing cards. Because I figured if I drew enough cards, I would see the Garga when I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and I probably wouldn't be in too much danger of losing it. Because uh, when we start talking about the uh, Argent cards in the deck, yeah. we are playing the uh, statue at the Argent Tower to shuffle in any of the effects we require. Because we're trying very hard to draw our deck. So it has the benefit of drawing us a card. It can trips. It shuffles in things we need, and it prevents me from decking myself, because I've played multiple games today where I went down to about four cards. Okay. Um, it's the Xander loop. At four <laughs> cards, you can't stop me from doing it anymore. Um, moving out of the green stuff, we didn't play any white two-trust units, because um, I, I just didn't feel like any of them were were there for like good effect for me. Um, but we did play the three Mel, of course, because they draw you two, and then off of the one off Rudy, they do draw you four cards, and that refills your hand, and a lot of the time when you draw four cards against someone who's trying to rush you down, they just, they meet a standstill. You're gonna see a Garga or a Sylphia or enough gears to get you through, more mm -hmm. units, that kind of thing. Um, that's rounding out our three drops. I played um, I'm going to do this over here. I believe I played two main board today because um, I was really looking for room uh, for most of this week, trying to figure out exactly how many gears was like optimal to make sure I could Xander on time mm -hmm. while keeping up with my draw abilities. And while Yuki's cool and she revenge kills a lot of things and it's a free guy that gets around under the Shard Beast, of course, um, she also nukes your hand and now you have them in play, which maybe is not what you want. Sometimes you do have to hold Yuki to discard to not, you know, uh, take an attack you'd rather not to take. Okay. Um, let's see. We played one Watchwoman at four, which was uh, actually a last minute addition. I could not decide what to do with the Watchwoman. Uh, 
So I, I added her, and admittedly, the games I won today were because of Watchwoman. So this maybe needs a little bit of reevaluation on my part, yeah. but she did a great job today. So what would you increase it to, to two or just three? Um, I'm thinking two. I was initially hesitant to include her because uh, she's not a knight, so in any turn where I'm stuck under my own shard beast or something like this, I can't play her, I can't use her for anything she sits. And I decided today that's maybe not the worst thing. Maybe I don't need to gas my hand as hard as I did in a couple of games. Um, like, I definitely took L's I didn't have to, which is fine. It happens. It's part of learning. Um, I think that's actually it for my, like, my units minus the one of Xander, of course. Um, that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to turbo into drawing him so that we can play him for as close as free as possible, if not free. Because it gets to the point where you have all these draw effects and your opponent kills it and you shuffle it back in with the statue of the Argent Tower we were talking about before. Yeah. And now they, like, maybe they can Corona Shard Alexander once or, or something, but not four times. Not four times. Uh, like, no, yeah. almost no one's dealing with consecutive Xanders like that. Um, like, in fact, the games I lost today, I didn't see the Xander at all. Uh, which, you know, again, it's, it's a probability game. So moving into the handful of spells I play, because I genuinely I didn't play that many. Um, we played three supply deal. Please don't judge me for only having two foils. Um, one V's blessing. One finishing ray. Why only one finishing ray? Um, I boarded the second one. I was already at 41 cards, and I didn't feel like I needed a finishing ray for anything other than X fizzy. Because yeah. to get rid of the Juggernauts. So if I couldn't um, Garga or Sylphia through a Juggernaut, Finishing Ray was my third way to do it. Okay. Um, and then that's actually, that, that rounds out the, the spells I play. That is it. That is it. That is all the main board so spells. So what's the spell count? Um, I, I was trying to use Orin's ability to tap down a unit while also attacking them to keep the amount of creature uh, units low on the table. Yeah. So that way, I didn't really need the, like, I, I didn't actually feel hurt for a Holy Slash all day, and I know a lot of people like to at least board them. I didn't feel like uh, it was specifically necessary. I wasn't disappointed with my lineup. The only thing I would change about these creatures, outside of maybe adding another Watchwoman, is making these Nanatsu. The Sky Tree, right? Yeah, yeah, because Nanatsu will eliminate threats as necessary, whereas this is me filtering to look for something that will eliminate a threat. Um, and they they basically are copies three through uh, or rather two through four of Sylphia in their own way. At least I, that's how I think about them. Um, and then the rest of the deck minus this, which is not supposed to be here, is Gears, <laughs> because well, who wouldn't be playing white without playing a big stack of Gears? Um, did you wanna did you wanna talk about them? Yeah, tell me. Okay. Um, we played two standard shard swords as targets for uh, Corm Squire. And occasionally, uh, if you open one up, you get to target attack more fragile opening boards. Yeah. So you get to target attack someone else who's trying to Arbor Carbuncle or something along these lines. Or a lot of the, uh, the, the White Spirit matchups, um, mm -hmm. whose name, wow, it just left me. It's been a very long day, uh, <laughs> forgive me. Well, um, against like Liam? Against specifically if you're playing the White Spirit, because you're going to try oh. to untap your 1,000 power guy. Yeah. So now I can send a Shard Beast after it. Or I can trade with your, I can, I can win a trade on your Shard Beast mm -hmm. that you didn't attack with yet. So I can keep you from growing uh, too, too far out of my control, ideally. Okay. Uh, then my last target, because I felt like I really, really needed to play three, since I played three of the Quorum Squire, is the Blessed Shard Cloak. Which, in retrospect, I'm not really feeling, but it was it was cool to have occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it would come up more often than it did, particularly against blue. But uh, largely, if they're going to deal with it, they're going to deal with it before it actually equips. Right. Um, I played two Shining Shard Dagger, which they told me I was a madman for, because obviously you play three of it, right? Um, so what does that do exactly? It gives quickness. It gives 500 power and quickness. So a lot of people want to play it so that they can slap a one-drop guy down on turn three, give him haste, break a tower. Yeah. Um, I'm mostly playing try to find a scander. So this card isn't doing a whole lot for me. Like very rarely am I going to need to give a Quorum Squire uh, quickness to take a tower. For the most part, I'm using them to hunt down the thousand power towers and be a nuisance. Um, yeah. they, they, they give me information. I feel like 
this required an amount of patience that uh, I don't think I had today. <laughs> but in a, in a perfect world, it should be functioning a little bit better. I, I think that somebody more skilled than me would have had a better day. Um, I played three of the Longinus, which by the way, I've been tracking down wave one rares. I love them. I love them so much. Um, yeah, so I played three of that, which deals 1500 damage um, and gives a thousand power. Um, I played two Caliber, which gives a thousand power and you can sacrifice it to draw a card and give the formerly equipped creature uh, untargetable. It can't be targeted by spells or abilities this turn. Yeah. I would probably sw switch these numbers around, but I actually didn't pull a third caliber. Mm. Fun, fun fact. <laughs> and then one Vriska, uh, the Scorpion Hammer, as uh, it lets me blow down Golems of Devourment, lets me blow down the Phantasmal Guards. Um, I can slap it on almost anything and still take a tower through these defensive maneuvers that people are trying to play. Mm -hmm. And that's that's like really the long and short of it. It's, it's I'm gonna draw as many cards as I can and uh, without necessarily going over seven, we're just trying to refill our hand every turn so we can keep the game going. Mm -hmm. And ideally, Xander's not the third from the bottom card and you get to actually play him for free. Um, sometimes he's gonna be the last card. There's just no way around that. <laughs> Uh, uh, do you want to talk about your sideboard? Um, sure. My sideboard's a little bit of a work in progress right now. Do you want me to? Yeah. Because I genuinely wanted to come in today siding Luna. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't have the cards to do that. So instead, I, I kind of came up with something that hopefully fixes a handful of my matchups. Um, starting with Sigil of Loss. Put that around. I had three of it in the sideboard, or two of it, hold on. I had two of it in the sideboard, but for the most part, I wasn't siding in two of it. It was there so that I had the option. Yeah. Um, this was for the mirror. I could deal with gears before Xander could get to them. Um, occasionally, Hoenna. Um, being able to stop a Philosopher's Stone on an arrive is useful. Stopping a Yami, maybe. Uh, yeah. These like pretty, pretty well-played cards. Um, I was siding into two Acid Monger, even though, you know, being in green, this probably was extra, but just in case I wanted the option. Yeah. Um, colorless cards, Twilight Knight, I thought it might come up. It really didn't. Uh, it's a really cool card. I want it to be a little bit more useful than it is, but I feel like when, by the time you can play it, unless you're playing the Raza package to cheat it in early, you're not really getting the value out of it. I um, mean, that might just be me, but that's, that's how I felt playing it. Um, those are the colorless cards, um, including uh, two Hallowed Crystal, because our plan was, if we really had to go to a game three, to side into Sola. Mm -hmm. In which case, I would add the second finishing ray, the uh, Yuki, the, the last Yuki, the Quorum Blade Masters, which uh, bring a gear back onto them from the graveyard and equip it. Mm -hmm. And Brant, who I'm beginning to believe should be a main board card for me. Uh, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. So we stayed at a legal amount because we would side in the colorless cards as well. And uh, then our two cards in our green side, for our green side, were the Royal Reflection, which... Um, Did that card ever come up? Yeah, actually. Um, I got to uh, steal a quickness gear from someone trying to play an Xander. Um, I got to swerve a Corona Shard. Um, someone tried to like Mizu my Xander in response to the trigger, so I tapped down their thing because they, they went tap draw instead of choosing two different targets, right? Mm -hmm. So it came up a lot. I'd probably play three of it and just like, okay, I don't need the Skyhawks this game. Or if I got the Nanatsus, maybe I don't need the Carbuncles this game and focus more on being moderately disruptive. Um, so like this could use some work, but I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, particularly, um, it didn't come up, but I really was looking forward to going into mono yellow for game three. <laughs> I really wanted to. That was that was like the goal today. But in the future, this might also just become a Luna sideboard because Brant, Brant deserves to be in the main deck. I played Jamile twice today, and Brant was just the answer to a lot of stuff that I dealt with. Um, but other than that, it was great. I, you know, I had a lot of fun with the deck. For, uh, it was your first event, correct? This is my first, like, bigger event. We had a local at our store about two weeks ago. Um, and so that was cool. We played there. So we came here to see what the rest of the Argenters were doing. 
and if they were just playing better than us, right? Because our nine guys have only really played with each other. There's like 11 of us in the store that play. Nine of us came out today. Yeah. Um, and so we came to see what, you know, we know a couple of the guys from other games that we've played, but this is relatively new to us. I really enjoyed your deck. Uh, yeah, thank you. Hope to see you again at bigger events. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely trying to make it down to something. I'm not sure when yet, but something. All right. See you then. <laughs> thank you.